Hey guys, so in this video, uh, we're going to review some code and we're going to make our own promise uh, from scratch using this new promise uh, keyword, right? You, you're, we're making using this keyword promise to create our own uh, promise from scratch, right? So what are our goals? Our goal is one is to practice this new syntax. Um, and then B, here's the scenario. Uh, let's say we want to make a query to a database with a certain set of parameters, and get that query back. And then we want to make another one with a different set of parameters, get that info back. And then after both have finished their queries and only then we want to have the ability to work with both of those in the same block of code. Um, for example, we're coming down here. We define these things, some rows, okay, and other rows, and they come from my SQL, this SQL query, and then this SQL query. All right. We know we want those. And now here we're in our in this final then. Right, we have then, 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 this final then, we're gonna work with both of those things, right? And we know that we've got them, okay. Now, one thing to note, you guys, uh, so I have created a sort of a class here, not sort of, it is a class, I've created a class. You need to do um, npm install MySQL. Okay, so because we're going to deal with MySQL, you also need to uh, have your own MySQL instance running locally. All right. All right. I guess misspelled that. Oh, well, let's not be perfectionistic, I guess. All right. So um, let's start with this class. Oh yeah, but I just want to make sure to always touch on this. You guys can get this this code right here. Okay, just in the video description down below, I will have these links so that you can get all of this code. It's in NP5, this one, and then also, and then here's the database class. Um, okay. So this is how we normally create our database connection um, and we're going to pass it to pass it some configurations which will be um, user fake password whatever your database is right so we, when we when we instantiate our object we're going to pass it our configurations um, so now here you when we use this new pro this uh, promise keyword, uh, we're going to pass in a function, and we have there's going to be two parts: resolve and reject. Just normally, what people will call you can give this a different name, but this is the standard or the convention. The accepted practice is to call this first one resolve and resolve here it just means fulfilled remember in my previous videos these videos are sequential they go one two three four etc if you don't know what fulfilled means you need to go back to the earlier videos in this series um, fulfilled it just means it completed normally right that okay it did what it was supposed to do and it didn't encounter an error okay so our class has some functions query and close all right so we're going to query and we're going to pass in our um sql okay if we get an error we're going to reject it and if we resolve it all right then we've got our rows um, and you can you can have a gander at this code a little little more closely, uh, but let's let's come over here. Um, 
Okay, so here we get our first set of rows. All right. And we are using we are using string sequel 2. So that's our first query. Maybe we need to do this before the other one. Okay. And if we do, then we're we're handling that possibility. Then we're going to return a function. We're going to return another promise. Okay, how do we know we're returning a promise? Because this is an asynchronous operation. All right, what that is, is this connection query. Okay. And again, that is asynchronous code. And remember, when you invoke a function that's asynchronous, it's going to return a promise. Okay, so we're returning something. What? We're returning the result of asynchronous code, an asynchronous function call, which this is. All right, now I'm blocking. So we know we're returning a promise because that's what's going to result here. So we come over and we're going to continue on. Remember, our then will receive the results of our promise. It could be the rows or it could be an, it could be an error. Right. And then we're going to. Uh, OK, now notice notice again here, you guys, we've got then, then, then um, and down here, finally trickling all the way down is uh, is our error message. Okay, now I use different syntax here just to, just to highlight, you know, we can you can use back ticks. It doesn't. Um, well, let's let's just quickly run it here. Uh, well, let's we need to. Oops. Save. I need to do that. Okay, so there are some roses for four, some roses five. Um, all right, so we can see it's working, but what if we, um, what if we did something like this? Something like that. Okay, there's our error, right? Here's our error message. We just went up and changed this to JJ. So here, uh-oh, unknown column JJ in where clause. Okay. So at any rate, you guys, uh, these um, promises are a little bit tricky. Okay, they're a, they're a little bit tricky, um, and it may be that I'm I'm anticipating that most of the people uh, who view this video will probably get the most mileage out of the first three videos. So. If you're looking at this uh, and you're going, well, wait, what, what's going on? Make sure to look carefully at the first three videos that precede this one.